That's exactly how the Phoenix Theater began, a potluck dinner and a bunch of dreamers who had, uh, by their own admission, more idealism than sense. We had so many people that it was bigger than our living room could hold. We pulled them all together to say, we want to create something new, something different, something that hasn't happened yet in Indianapolis. How do we go about doing that? Um, we are uh, celebrating our 30th anniversary. We started off with less than nothing. So when you think about those really, really modest beginnings, it's amazing how far the Phoenix Theater has come. gotta be do, do, and you're reaching for hand, you're not gonna slug her, right? So you don't think you're doing anything, but you gotta, it's gotta be a clean so that she has a reason to flail by it. The magic of rehearsal in Phoenix is that it is very short and it's very intense. You are absolutely incomprehensible. Do you know what you're putting everybody through? Like your family? An actor has to be on top of their their craft and their game when they come in to rehearse the show at the Phoenix because you have to really put it together quickly. You smell terrible! And I wouldn't be surprised if you had lines. Better, much better, much better. How well do you guys think you know these lines? Pretty darn well? You can't waste a second. And you, you have to come in prepared and you, you know, on opening night, sometimes there's a lot of, you know, Okay, <laughs> we're all holding hands, we're gonna do this. I wasn't expecting you. Would you hear a fire alarm? What? Would you hear a fire alarm? I heard you. And we do wish sometimes that we had more time just to, so that we're more comfortable on opening night, but you know, it, it gets us through. <laughs> you need a place to stay? I can't understand you. What do you mean? A Phoenix saying is, we're open, therefore we're ready. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a 10. Uh, when is our friend Jack coming in? Eight, right? Eight, so I'd like to just run. Mm. No, I, we're going to let the scene lie here tonight. We're going to let it lie here. Theater can react so quickly, so fleetly. Um, playwrights can watch the news about something that's happened in the world on Wednesday night and be writing a play on Thursday morning and a theater can be producing that play a few months later. I don't know it by heart but we have a mission statement and it's been tweaked a little bit over the years but basically it is a theater that is devoted to contemporary plays and contemporary issue-oriented plays. Plays by Latino and African-American authors and feminist authors and gay and lesbian authors. Uh, plays that maybe explored topics that were not always talked about in polite society. Uh, that might be a little bit in your face. He claims this family, the family to whom Ted sold the house. It's a color family. Sorry, don't we say Negro now? We are here to share what's new, what's vibrant, what, what we should be, what we think we as a community should be aware of or thinking about. When people leave a performance at the end of the night or the afternoon, when they leave the Phoenix Theater, I want them to think. Over the past few years, numerous books and documentaries have raised the question of whether Jackson was a great president or whether he was in fact a we want people to talk about it. You don't have to agree with everything that's on stage. We don't want you to agree with everything on stage. We want dialogue. <laughs> Mother of man! Call her daddy? No, no, son. That's the work of engines. Engines? Why? We're going to beat them back like the British. We're going to drive them out like the Spaniards. Because don't you ever forget, young Andrew Jackson, this is our land. And even 
the land that isn't our land. It's the land that shall be our land. So pick up They've said to the friend they came with, what does that mean? Or has that ever happened to you? Or we have to tell our friends about this? Or even, I didn't like that and here's why. You go right ahead and you tell these people what kind of house they're moving into and see if that stops them. Because I'll tell you what, I don't care if a hundred you bangy tribesmen with a bone through the nose over on this goddamn place. There, there have been some interesting technical achievements that have been done, and, <laughs> and it's interesting because when we do them here, it's always on a shoestring, but, but they always happen. We did a play called uh, The Lieutenant of Inishmore. The Lieutenant of Inishmore was a very, very bloody show. 61 gunshots every night and five gallons of stage blood every night. It was an enormous amount of blood on the stage when it was done. And the technical crew of which I was would take three to four hours to clean up after every show. And a lot of the audience stayed to watch at least the first 15 or 20 minutes of the cleanup because five gallons of stage blood is significant. The flood in Octopus was amazing to sit out here. I wasn't in that play, but to watch the door open and this stage right behind me to be flooded and to know that it was accomplished by the technicians here in this theater who I know have no money. You know, we're, we're little but we're, we're uh, scrappy so nothing really daunts us too much. We'll do it. I certainly believe that the Phoenix Theater will be here in another 30 years and that it will continue to be a vital arts group. I'm feeling optimistic. I think that we have a lot of new blood, new, new young people are coming in and I think uh, the theater will continue. And that's what you want. You want it to continue. I would hope that it's, that it's still following the mission that we set forth at our inception. Of course it will be interpreted in a new way. Um, but that it will still be populated with passionate artists, passionate board members, a highly functional art organization, and that it, it continues to contribute a lot to the community.